Hey everyone, Ro here. Well, the time has finally arrived, and we reach the grand final. The final matchup to see who you think is the strongest Astartes chapter. I always enjoy doing these voting weeks, and I've had a few people ask if we could do a Battle of the Heroes next. A Heresy Era or 40k? Well, yes, absolutely, we can do both of those in the future. The next week's special, however, will be Vulcan Week, as I am really looking forward to that. As always, any more suggestions or requests, then just feel free to drop me a message or something and I'll add it to the list. But as for today, well, the results are in, and obviously we need to cover our semi-final winners and losers. In our first semi-final matchup, we had the Ultramarines taking on the Black Templars. Could the Sons of Rabute Gilliman be the first chapter to dethrone the might of the Templars? Well, in short, no. But oh, did they run them close. Just 6% difference in the voting. The Ultramarines coming by far and away the closest yet to stopping the juggernaut that is the Templars. The numbers advantage once again just proves too much for the standard chapters to overcome. And Helbrecht and his Templars move on to the grand finale. Next, we had the Blood Angels against the Space Wolves. And well, brace yourself, Ro, brace yourself. The Blood Angels came out victorious. Ugh. Despite my personal opinion of the Space Wolves being far too much for the Angels of Sanguinius, you have voiced your opinion otherwise, and the Blood Angels have once more overcome the odds. Winning with 59% to 41. Two very closely run semi-finals. Ah, you broke my heart, Fredo, you broke my heart. The final is decided. Helbrecht and his Black Templars will crusade into the Imperium Nihilus and face Dante and the Blood Angels. It's quite funny how it worked out, actually, as I've been debating on starting a Blood Angels or Black Templar force over the past few weeks. And, well, I could have the decision made for me right here. So, let's just jump straight in. Now, the Black Templars have had a fairly convincing path through to the final, first facing their fellow Sons of Dawn, they demolished Pedro Cantor and the Crimson Fists. Next up, despite an early scare in the voting, they proved too much for the Sons of Vulcan, and claimed a fairly comprehensive victory over the Salamanders. Then, finally, as we just discussed, they managed to come through their toughest test yet against Rabute Gilliman's Ultramarines. The biggest advantage the Black Templars have for my mind has been their huge size and their fanatical zeal, both of which lend them in good stead against the Blood Angels. Now, the Black Templars' actual size is really anybody's guess. However, for this tournament, I've been preferring to go by the older lore that gave us a rough estimate of around five to 6,000 Marines. And I've always wanted to keep it realistic to the current situation we know within the galaxy, with it all being so thrown into turmoil, with Templar Crusades quite literally all over the place. I find it incredibly unlikely that Helbrecht could summon all of his chapter back together with any relative speed. Many Crusades wouldn't even receive his messages. Many would want to finish their own campaigns first. And I think a few Marshals might simply just ignore it, believing their own actions vindicated by the God Emperor. 
That said, I very much think that'd still leave Helbrecht with several thousand Templars at his command. Which is a monumental advantage. Several thousand Astartes extra. The Templars would be bringing a formidable fleet. Unlike the Space Wolves where we expect them to have one, but we can't really say for sure. We know the Templars would have one. They are a fleet-based chapter. They are called the Eternal Crusade for a reason. Each crusade heeding Helbrecht's call would be bringing a powerful fleet in its own right. Combined, that is an insane amount of firepower. Whereas we've been giving Dante the advantage in the Void, with his attempts at building a battle fleet Nihilus, I don't think we can here. At the very least, it would be a stalemate. We need to remember Dante may have the title of Warden of Imperium Nihilus, but he's been given that for a reason. Nihilus is an absolute nightmare. Every world is isolated and alone, cut off and surrounded by the ruinous powers. It is nothing like Imperium Sanctus. Dante is literally having to try and find and salvage anything he can. Theoretically, he might have half the Imperium at his disposal, thanks to his title. However, the reality is very different. Most of the Imperium Nihilus most likely has no idea Dante has even been appointed. Or even that the Imperium still fights on for that matter. It is a very grave set of circumstances. Now, the zeal of the Templars. That could prove very effective in facing the Blood Angels in combat. While your average Templar may not quite be a match for a Blood Angel in the midst of their rage, it would absolutely ensure there is no doubt or hesitancy within their mind. The Templars are utterly convinced they have the God Emperor on their side. That's everything they do, they do with his blessing. As I've said previously, that can be a very powerful tool to have within your arsenal. The Templars wouldn't be hesitating in the slightest, going up against the Angels. And if anything, the sight of Angels fallen to rage and with thirst for blood, well, it could further enhance their resolve and sense of righteousness. Now for the Angels. Well, as they were previously against the Space Wolves, they are vastly outnumbered. For me, much like previously where I felt Dante had to gamble, I feel the same would most definitely apply here. Dante couldn't allow this to be fought on a battlefield, because he'd simply be overwhelmed. In the face of such odds, there really is nothing else Dante could do but try to make it avoid engagement. He could not hold back. He couldn't play defensive. He would have to play to his strengths and strike hard and fast. Assuming the fleets are at least equally numbered, Dante should have the flexibility to be a little creative, and you would assume Helbrecht would play straight into Dante's hands by charging straight in himself. There's no other ultimate scenario I could see than these two leaders facing each other down, surrounded by their elite. Dante and his sanguinary guard, and Helbrecht with his sword brethren. What a matchup that would be to see. The bridge of the Eternal Crusader, as these two titans go up against each other. Now there is a bit of a problem in that because Helbrecht has crossed the Rubicon Primaris, but we'll discuss that in a bit. 
if somehow Dante could take out the Eternal Crusader, that opens up the very real possibility of confusion being sown within the Templar fleet, as the remaining marshals would all immediately have to strike a new chain of command. And that may not be so easy in the heat of the moment. As I've said throughout this tournament, the Black Templar Marshals are all fiercely independent. It's not like your standard chapter, where you'd assume the first company captain would be the logical voice in the moment. The Marshals could all see themselves as that logical choice, which would be a communication nightmare. With all the Marshals striking out on their own, teamwork would be going out the window. And that could just be the small window that Dante needs. A big advantage for the Angels would also be Mephiston, the Lord of Death. Most likely the most powerful Psyker within all the Adeptus Astartes. The Templars have nothing to counter him with. So he could unleash tremendous damage until they could take him out which would not be easy at all. If you have read any of the Blood Angels novels, you will see just how crazy powerful Mephiston is. The guy has become an absolute wrecking ball. They also have the Sanguinor, the figurative symbol of the chapter. Again, this would be a tough ask for the Templars to take out. It would be quite interesting to see how the Templars would react to fighting an embodiment of the Angel. Yes, we know it's his Herald, but the Templars don't know that. Most likely seeing him as some kind of fallen Angel. But maybe the Templars do have the perfect counter to that after all. A factor we haven't had much need to bring up for them previously within the tournament and that is the Emperor's Champion. As iconic as Dante and Helbrecht could be going up against each other, how about the Sanguinor going up against the Emperor's Champion? Could you get two more evocative symbols of faith in the Emperor? As crushed as I am that the Wolves aren't in the final, this contest definitely brings up some great images to the imagination. So, the Blood Angels may be heavily outnumbered here, but they do have some definitive advantages going for them in their own right. Again, the key may just be that Dante Helbrecht matchup. Could Dante manage to take out Helbrecht? I'm sure the popular answer is yes, but it really is a tough ask. Helbrecht is an immensely powerful warrior. You don't become the High Marshal of the Templars otherwise. And he is now a Primaris, where Dante is not. It's bad enough the Primaris are quicker, bigger, stronger, but they also have the Belisarian Furnace, meaning they can all but come back from death the first mortal wound they take. Dante may be able to get the advantage over Helbrecht once, but could he do it twice? Would he be able to press the advantage enough to completely take out Helbrecht before his advantages overcame him? I have a personal affection for Dante, so if anyone could, I'd love to say he could. But the truth is, it is a very, very tall ask. Now normally I give my opinion on how I'd side, but considering it's the grand finale, well, I'll just leave it to you for your vote. I think you can probably tell anyway if you've been watching the previous rounds thus far, who I expected or thought would get through those rounds. In the battle for the strongest Space Marine chapter, we have the Eternal Crusade the mighty Black Templars, against the iconic Sons of Sanguinius, the Blood Angels. Who is victorious? Well, that is for you to decide. 
As always, you can vote on my Instagram, WolflordRow, and I'll have a link to the polls in the description. Make sure your vote counts because this is the grand final. There is no coming back. As always everyone, what do you think? Who is coming out of this mighty contest with the win? Make sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to cast your vote. As always, huge thank you to all my subscribers. Your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? With that said, I am off and I'll see you all again real soon.